Cool. We starting? Cool. Hi, I'm Alex. I produce video games. Hi, I'm Kieran. I make videos on the internet. And write stuff. Many of you will already have seen, well not precisely this video, but the video that I'm currently responding to. Other people have already done responses, but I really felt that I needed to. So here we go. My response to Alex Lifshitz's introduction, which I'm guessing most of you will already have seen. Let's get on with it. Uh, quick warning, some of the slides late in the presentation depict some uh, transphobic, violent, and sexist content, uh, all of which are screenshots from modern titles. They're in there in order to illustrate a point, so just an FYI. Uh, that being said, let's get off on the right foot here. And already you can tell this is going to be just dreadful. It begins with a trigger warning. Oh no, there's going to be some slides with uh, something transphobic in it. Won't someone think of the children? Thank you for your consideration. You are a very, very considerate, psychotic idiot. Yeah. Oh, oh boy. Sure, let's go with that, why not? So this is the familiar, voluble refrain of the steam green light peanut gallery, committed to snuffing out the imposters in their midst. Their concern is in deference, perhaps unconsciously, to the fact that we are all going to die, probably soon and probably painfully, so of course, we need to min-max our time on Earth. And how dare these precious moments fall into the clutches of some false icon like Depression Quest. No, that, that's not what it's about at all, but in fact, the, the whole issue with the Russian Quest was the corruption surrounding it and the fact that it's shite. You, you can go around making whatever game you want, provided you don't do it in any corrupt and immoral manner, and that the finished product is a decent game that people will want to play. When all you've made is a an electronic choose-your-own-adventure book, which is quite dull and fairly uninteresting, you don't get to tout your achievement like it's some sort of incredible leap forward in gaming. When <laughs> there are such incredible games out there. Even fucking, just, just comparatively, like, something from ages and ages ago. Like a fucking SNES game has more depth to it than Depression Quest is better made. I mean, think of what they've got nowadays, what we have, okay? Think of the fucking Skyrim, okay? It's a couple of years old now, I'm pretty sure, but... Skyrim is incredible. Huge depth. Tons and tons of characters. Great. I mean, not uh, graphics compared to like some of the more recent stuff and an awful lot of the mods that people have spent years developing and all the rest of it. But compared to this piece of shit like Depression Quest, it's a fucking staggering, incredible example of what games can be. Depression Quest is barely even a game. It's got nothing to do with the fact that we're all going to eventually die and that we can't deal with it and don't want to spend our lives playing Depression Quest. You're right, we are all going to die. We can deal with it. And what we've said is, actually, yeah, we, we do kind of want to play games we want to play. When you want to make all games like Depression Quest, and whenever we say, actually, this is the sort of game we like, and you say, no, you're not allowed to play that anymore. It's wrong. We get pissed off. Someone says, I want to play Grand Theft Auto, and you say, actually, Grand Theft Auto is sexist, and it's misogynist, and it's transphobic, and all the rest of the other things, so no, you're not allowed to play it. In fact, actually, you go to hell, because you're evil, you cisgendered pig! Then we say, no, I'm, I'm going to play the game I want to play, cause, because I have autonomy over myself, and my own interests, and likes and dislikes, and I happen to like that game. I've never even played any of the GTA games. They don't interest me, so I won't. But other people will, and they should be allowed to. It just fucking... Uh. But with the same respect for these fleeting moments, we have to ask why we're moralizing over a label like video game for its own sake, uh, as though the role games and non-games play in our lives are somehow orthogonal. Well, that's one of the concerns. I'm guessing, based on your 
a very odd use of the word orthogonal that you are attempting to uh, equate video games with things that aren't video games in terms of how they affect us. It's amazing that um, video games sort of affect us 50% of the time, and then everything else that isn't video games ever affects us the other 50%. At which point I've, I've got to say, no. Fucking <laughs> no. It's, I mean, the, everything that isn't video games is quite a lot of stuff. Seeing as how it encapsulates everything that isn't video games. And of course you, you're using it in some even more obscure way that I can't understand in my limited non-social justice warrior mindset where, you know, I rely on logic, reason, and things that make sense. If we judge the validity of media by its success in fulfilling the purpose of media, then Depression Quest is more valid than any mere video game could ever hope to be, and this directly affects your purpose as critics. What? No. No, it hasn't. No, it isn't. No, it doesn't. No, 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 none of this. No. Did any piece of media should be valued on what it achieves, but also on what it was intended to achieve. A video game is there to cause pleasure for the gamer. You, you, you get a game to enjoy the game. Then you play the game, and if you enjoy the game, then the game has succeeded in creating enjoyment. Uh, the amount of enjoyment relative to how much you spent on it, how much time you put into it and all the rest of it, will indicate just how successful the game is. That's how it works. Um, Skyrim, for instance, is a game I've played a lot, many, 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 many hours, and it's caused me an awful lot of enjoyment. And for the relatively small amount I paid for it compared to how much it, uh, how much enjoyment it gave me, I, it was very, very successful. Skyrim is a good game. Depression Quest is dull and boring and doesn't take very long. So, it's not very good. What you're suggesting is that uh, Depression Quest is not a game, sorry, not a mere game, as games are in some way less good than Depression Quest, um, but that it has some higher purpose. In this instance, I believe it, it's attempting to talk about mental health issues. Um, it, something that I don't even think is necessarily that big an issue, to be honest. Yes, mental health issues exist, but everyone already knows about them. What we should be doing is uh, giving help to the people who are affected by them, not letting people know what it's like to be in their positions. How does that help? At most, it can only be a meaningless distraction, like a game. But it's not a very good meaningless distraction, which means it's not a very good game. What you're suggesting is that all games should be like this, should be not <laughs> for the purpose of uh, creating pleasure in the user, but for catapulting your ideology into the minds of the user. Which I don't think is good. Games should be for gaming, for gamers, for people who play games. That makes sense to me. Books should be for readers, for people who read. Films should be for people who watch films and all the rest of it. If a person making a game wants to make a game that's not for that, they are perfectly willing to do so. So I, 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 everyone should be, it, it should be fine for people to do that. There's no issue with that. But that shouldn't be the default position, nor should it be forced upon anyone else. And people like you shouldn't have the authority to influence other people's creative processes. Someone says, I want to make a game about, I don't know, decapitating chickens. You don't get to say, but can we shove some feminist rhetoric in there? You don't get to say, but where are all the transgender chickens? You don't get to say, where are all the gay chickens? You can ask that, but they have the right to say, well, we didn't want to put any in, so we haven't, and that'd be okay. Your ideology and your uh, proposed moral compass shouldn't affect other people's creative decisions or their ability to exercise their freedom of speech or their art. You should have no power over other people.
in this regard and your insistence that corruption is not only acceptable but needed in order for your ideology to be permeated throughout the entire industry as justification for the corruption is hideous I just I have no idea how you can have such such a degree of cognitive dissonance that you are able to justify immorality in order to push an agenda which is harmful and detrimental and restricts people's basic freedoms for the purposes of what there being more transsexuals in video games there aren't even that many transsexuals in real life that doesn't mean that, that doesn't mean that they shouldn't get rights they should have the same rights as non transgendered people that's fine but just shoving them into video games to seem more inclusive is stupid and detrimental to the art form if you want to put a transgender person in your video game put a transgender person in your video game you want to not then fucking don't it should be up to the people making the game it's fucking mer bear with me here uh, there are some things it's worth noting that depression quest is not for instance depression quest is not a pipe <laughs> in the late 1920s belgian surrealist rene magritte painted the treachery of images uh, depicting a simple tobacco pipe the text states and pardon me if i butcher this ceci uh, n'est pas un pipe translated to english this is not a pipe Magritte was being truthful, the message being that it is merely a painting of a pipe. Magritte said of his work, people reproached me for it, and yet, could you stuff my pipe? For all the flack he caught for his piece, Magritte never drew the ire of the readership of Pipe Informer, incensed over the idea that they couldn't stuff his painting. Yeah, he also never declared that all smokers are dead, or had a massive conspiracy in the press in order to... Um, uh, sort of demonize all pipe smokers, nor did he um, lie and cheat and steal and uh, sleep his way to the top, nor indeed uh, be in any way corrupt. Uh, it was just art, that's all it was, it was just art. What you're going for is not art, what you're going for is art that you want to shove in people's th faces and down our throats and uh, claim it's the greatest thing in existence ever and that everything should be like this and if they're not then you're a misogynist Marguerite did nothing wrong and you're right he didn't get the same flack that you lot did he also didn't do the same fucking thing did he? I mean that's just fucking ridiculous you don't get to say well, look, you know, there was no outcry when someone else did something. And it'd be something totally different. There was no outcry when the Gideons started putting Bibles in, in hotel rooms. So why can't I start a new crusade, damn it? Because they're two fucking different things. Yes, well done. Some person in the past didn't have exactly the same experience as some person in the present when two different things occurred. Bra fucking o. Good fucking job. Had this happened, he would have gotten a taste of life as an experiential game developer. This is the treachery of games. We are insecure about games. We are insecure about game criticism. When confronted with intruders like Depression Quest, we dare to, which dare to exist in the discourse reserved for AAA travesties and the Unreal Engines of Power Them, our reaction is defensive and neophobic. We dismiss their value outright for non-compliance with the arbitrary mores that they seek to question, like a beltway bigot desperately fastening qualifiers to the definition of marriage. Well, no, not really. Uh, we haven't actually added anything else to the definition of game. The game is just, it's a game if it's designed to elicit pleasure in the gamer. To be played by a gamer. To play the game. <laughs> it's, very, it's a very simple definition. Games exist so that gamers will play them and enjoy them. That's the only definition. It needs nothing more, that nothing has been added to it. And, I mean, technically, 
as far as the whole marriage thing goes, it all being between one man and one woman. Uh, if they go in by like legal definitions and whatnot, then technically they're correct until recently when suddenly now it's okay. Which is fine by me. I personally don't think even straight people should be getting married because I think marriage is terrible. But <laughs> if you want to get married, go ahead. It's not gonna, I'm not going to stop you. It doesn't bother me in the slightest. But your <laughs> insistence that people that hate Depression Quest uh, because it's somehow intrusive into the, the I don't know, the, the preconceived norms of what game is, um, is bollocks. Because it's not very good. And because of all the corruption surrounding it, it's got nothing to do with it being uh, not confined to the very narrow view of what games are. The definition of game incorporates a fuck ton of stuff. Here you know how many games there are. And how many different forms of game there are. It's not even just video games. No, no, there are many different types of game. There are board games and card games and role-playing games. There are sports and all kinds of shit. This is just games fucking everywhere. It's... That's... Everything. Even choose-your-own-adventure books are games. They're also books, but the games too. And just creating an electronic version of a quite a poorly written one... It's still a game, it's just not very good. And the reason I called it barely a game is because it wasn't created for the purposes of the gamer enjoying it, as far as I can tell. It's possible that really it was, and that, you know, the person who made it is just not very good. But as far as I can tell, they put little to no effort into making it enjoyable. The whole thing's about the message behind it. Which is just stupid. That would make it not a game. That would make it like a fucking billboard or something. It's a soapbox. It's a megaphone. It's, it's not there for the gamer's enjoyment, which makes it kind of not a game. Now you could argue that yes, it's, it's still a game because it was designed so that people would enjoy it. But I've seen no evidence of that. I can admit that it, it could well have been, at least a little bit. At which point it would be a game. But that's clearly not what it was mostly intended for. There's nothing wrong with making a shit game. Just when people say it's shit, deal with it. Don't say, no, it's the greatest thing in the world! If you can't take criticism, fuck off. Don't go into the spotlight if you can't handle someone telling you you're not very good. Even if you're the best in the world, people are going to tell you you're not very good. If you can't deal with it, deal with it. <laughs> to quote a recent obituary of Philip Seymour Hoffman, it's like watching a group of children gossiping in a nonsense language they had invented in order to exclude an unpopular classmate. There's a certain internal logic apparent in the chatter as the gibberish is repeated in certain sequences respecting vague rules using distinct inflections. But all an observer would be able to discern amidst the nonsense is latent contempt for the subject. So you couldn't even write your own... Uh, fine, okay. Well, no. Because when we have actual, you know, legitimate criticisms like it's not very fun, it's not very well made, there's a lot of glitches, the artwork's not very good, and all kinds of other things. That's not nonsensical chatter, what that is is valid criticism. And when we say, look at all the corruption, here's all the evidence of the corruption, then what you do is say, what exactly? That would some sort of collective echo chamber? that it's just noise because you're not willing to accept that other people have different views to you we were perfectly willing to accept Depression Quest wasn't very good and then when someone said look how amazing it is and we said well hang on you've got a conflict of interest and you say no it's not about corruption fuck off you're all misogynists that's what happened. There's none of this whole gibberish thing. That's not a thing. You're just bullshitting. I, I just fucking.
Uh, how how can you think this? I mean, I'm I'm guessing that you're just quite stupid, um, particularly because you <laughs> you appear to be one of these people who just throws um, obscure or um, smart sounding words into sentences in order to make yourself appear more intelligent. Uh, there is quite a few of those people. In fact, I even used to be one of those people. I tend not to do that anymore. <laughs> because I grew up. Maybe you should try that. All this in defense of a thoroughly besotted narcissistic industry that fabricates its sense of integrity from whole cloth. But to satisfy the pedance, another concession. Depression Quest is not depression. In a scientific paper published in 1931, philosopher Alfred Korzybski encapsulated the concept of a map-territory relationship, a relationship between a concept abstracted from a thing and a thing itself, observable, ingestible representations of a territory or concept we normally cannot grasp without the experience of actually being there. Marshall McLuhan argued that all media is comprised of such relationships, extensions and abstractions of situations or emotions, such as invincibility, victory, uh, voyeurism or inquisition. Depression Quest is trying to extend and abstract something specific. It was never meant to go down comfortably. Depression Quest is not a smash hit top 40 single. Depression Quest is a map to the territory of depression and it uses interactivity to draw a startlingly accurate diagram. As a piece of pure media then, it's a resounding success. Though you say so yourself, um, I do know many depressed people who would disagree with you. Um, the issue is, depression, like pretty much all mental illnesses, affects people differently depending on who they are and isn't in any way universal. Um, as someone who has been depressed, I can tell you that <laughs> depression guys did not in any way um, mimic me. It's not startlingly accurate, it's quite poorly written and executed. It's as a piece of media it's not very successful and the fact that everyone hates it because it's shit would indicate that as a game it's also pretty unsuccessful when you get people you know to write decent reviews of it however um, that makes it look successful until people point out that the conflict of interests and say actually look at all the corruption aren't you all scum <laughs> then you lose that as well you, you, you've lost on all fronts. You've got nothing. <laughs> nothing at all. It's pathetic. Video game isn't just a label. It's a subclassification, a phylum of media. It's a low bar that Depression Quest manages to leave in the dust. Okay, first of all... <laughs> <laughs> you fucking moron. And second of all, you're now using Linnaean taxonomical terms to refer to video games as a classification. Do you have any justification for this? Video game just means a, <laughs> it's a video game. It's, it's something that is audio and visual based that is designed to uh, introduce some sort of pleasure response from the gamer. It's a video game. It's like a normal game, only it's, you know, it involves video, or more accurately, it involves uh, images of uh, a preloaded universe um, designed by the designer. Doesn't necessarily have to have sound. Does have to have, you know. So, oh no, technically no, because no, because no, text still counts. That either way, okay. Video games are video games. It's not like there's video games, then somewhere above that is art. Video games can, in fact, be art. Uh, all art has to do... Right, no, there's several different definitions of art. The most, most common I've found is are, uh, art either has to be solely for the purpose of being art, in which case only certain video games fall into that category, Alternatively, the other definition that I often hear it, um, is that art has to evoke some sort of emotional response in the viewer. In which case, that would be pretty much all video games ever. Which would make the entire industry basically art. Every entrance in it. Every entrant in it, that's what I meant, sorry. I mean... 
<laughs> Depression Crest does not leave anything in the dust. It, it's it, it just lies there, defeated, because it's so shite. It's got nothing going for it. I would en I encourage everyone to go and play Decre Depression Quest just so that you can see how shite it is. At which point you can say, "You're yeah, right." Most of you will just be like, "Okay, it kind of yeah." It was I played it. Just basically a waste of time. Maybe you'll enjoy it. Maybe you'll actually like the game. I'm guessing there will be people out there who do. There will at least be some of you. But if you speak objectively, you've got to say, it's not very good. Not when there are so many significantly better things out there. But of course, you're not actually interested in in how fun games are, are you, Mr. Lipschitz? No, no, you, you care only about the ideology that you can staple to them and then, I don't know, have force-fed through tubes. <laughs> I don't fucking know. I don't know what your vision of the world should be. It's just fucking ridiculous that you're saying that there's games and then, then there's depression quest. Oh, on a pedestal with beams of light in it. Blessed by God. It's just not very good. There's nothing good about it. The fact that you happen to agree with its bullshit message is irrelevant. Games aren't about the message. But the fucking gaming. And this is where you come in. I view creators of not just games, but of all media as cultural cartographers with the duty of praising their maps falling to you, the critics. Not just for their presentation and legibility, nor their format, but for their accuracy. And as the proverb goes, the best way to learn about the journey ahead is to ask someone who's just returning from it. So what you're doing right now is talking to video game critics and saying, please don't judge this video game on the same merits that you would judge normal video games, that is to say on how good it is as a video game, but instead judge it the way I would like you to judge it, because as far as I'm concerned, the way I would like it to be judged would indicate that it would be a good game and so you'd give it decent reviews. Do you have any idea how ridiculous that is? That's like someone fucking, I don't know, the new Assassin's Creed game. So I'm saying, okay, um, please don't judge it based on all the glitches and um, the gameplay and the characters and all the rest of it. Uh, instead, we'd like you to judge it based on how much I, the designer, like the game. Um, because I think it's great. Uh, so please give it 10 out of 10 from me. <laughs> I don't understand how corrupt that is. <laughs> you don't get to tell them what you want your game to be judged on. They will judge it the way they want to. They're fucking critics. They should get to say, I am being a critic of this game, and I believe that there are these things wrong with it and these things right with it. I think that the graphics, for instance, are very, very good. I, I, I think that the gameplay is okay, but for some reason it's been limited to 30 frames per second. I don't know why they've done this. Etc. They can say what they want. They shouldn't have to say, well, you know, completely ignoring all of the, the gameplay and the design and the graphics and everything. I think that the overall message behind this game is one that, that Alex Lufschitz agrees with, so in reality I think it deserves 10 out of 10. That's <laughs> not the way it fucking works! That's not the way it should work! Critics should be critical. They shouldn't ask people relevant to the game what they want to be critiqued on. That's not what it's about. It's not even remotely what it should be about. You judge a game on its merits and on its flaws. Not on whatever its fucking publicist decides you should. Except this industry, this readership, this consumer demographic, we demand knowledge of the route, but shun knowledge of the journey. We want to muzzle your experience and call it journalistic impartiality. Let's be perfectly clear, impartiality is bullshit. Sorry, uh, sorry, what, what was that? You just say that again. Clear, impartiality is bullshit. Just, just, just repeat that again, just, just say well, just one, 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 one more time, one more time. Clear, impartiality is bullshit. Yeah, I thought that's what you said. Impartiality is bullshit. So what you're suggesting is that in all of history, 
all journalists have always been biased and that this is in some way okay um, I'm gonna have to call bullshit based primarily on the fact that impartiality is not bullshit because people like Total Biscuit exist people like fucking me exist Looking, uh, there are bloody what's called that? There's, I'm just trying to find them. If I can find them, I'll put them in. The, I'll put a link to them um, in the description. Um, there was recently. There's a, uh, a Christian um, reviewer, game reviewer, and what they do is they give two different scores. Uh, one, a completely impartial um, view based solely on the merits and critics of the, of the game itself. It's totally unbiased, and then a separate review. In which they put their biases in and say, but it's against God, damn it! That's God, comma, damn it, not God, damn it. Um, <laughs> which would indicate that even fundamentalist Christians are able to be impartial when it comes to critiquing video games. You're telling me that people at reputable journals and newspapers and magazines. Uh, can't, and that this is okay. Not only are you wrong, but that's quite a sinister accusation and quite a cynical worldview. And I say that as someone who's very, very cynical. It's fucking. Ugh. You can't control how you feel, <laughs> only how you choose to externalize your feelings, and that's what we're so desperately trying to control. Okay, so let me get this straight. You're saying that critics can't control the way they feel. Well, that's not true, so you're wrong already. Um, then you say that you are trying desperately to control the way that they let these uh, emotions that they apparently can't control influence them and their writing. You want to selectively pick and choose which feelings they may or may not indulge in their critical writings. You are literally saying you want to conspire to influence critical thought in the video games industry to promote your agenda. How can you not understand this? How can you be okay with that? This isn't even and the ends justify the means bullshit. This is, this is, there, there are the ends, and, and there are the means, and neither is justifiable, and neither justifies the other, and you're just going for it anyway because you feel like it. Just, how? How can you think this is fucking acceptable? I'm a AAA producer. That's where I live. I've seen the emails come down about E3 demos and press junkets, and I'm line level in a producer pit, so chances are I'm the one booking your flights and your bar tabs and spa treatments and catering and rooms full of HD TVs and alien wares and razor keyboards with neon fucking undercarriages. And none of these are about the game. We're plying you with payola. We're not just expecting you to not be impartial, we're fucking banking on it. Oh, <laughs> bad move, mate, bad move. You have just flat out admitted to bribing critics in order to influence their decisions. Now, admittedly, I think that this whole bribing critics thing won't affect everyone. I, for instance, couldn't give a fuck. Someone sends me a brand new gaming computer with a game that they want me to review. I should be like, all right, try it out. Be like, yeah, okay, this is good, this is bad, this is good, this is bad. This is what it gets. It gets three point seven out of ten. That's <laughs> what I wouldn't bother me in the slightest. But it would bother some people, like Total Biscuit, who were like, who was like, okay, well, I've been offered shit. I'm not going to accept it because it might influence me. So you're saying that you are bribing people, that you're attempting to ply them with payola, as you put it, in order to get them to write good reviews. And you said that you are not just expecting them to not be impartial, but that you are fucking banking on it, indicating that you require them to not be impartial in order to get good reviews.
which would indicate that you know that your games are shite. If a game is reviewed, it should be reviewed based on its merits and its flaws. You make a good game, it'll get good reviews, that's the way it should work. You shouldn't have to pay off people to get good reviews. Don't you think that if you are in a situation where in order to get favourable reviews, you have to pay off everyone who writes reviews, that perhaps you're not very good at it? Might that have crossed your mind? That perhaps you suck at it? That <laughs> just, just makes fucking sense to me. This game doesn't get good reviews unless we give this person a new computer, a new game, a new fucking console, unless we pay for his hotel room and his food and I don't know what. So it's probably not very good. Unless you're telling me that every single journalist is corrupt, when we know that this, for instance, isn't true already. Because certain people exist. Um... Gotta tell ya, admitting to your corruption was not a smart move. Then acting like it's okay makes you look like an ideologue and an idiot. Then it getting put on the internet and copied and pasted everywhere has helped <laughs> to give us more fuel for the flames and uh, to catapult Gamergate into something awesome. When the corruption is this obvious, when you admit to it, plain as day, how can anyone stand against us? Well, the answer is, most people haven't seen the evidence. They just blindly accept you because, I don't know, people are idiots. That's why we need more people showing the evidence. Showing the corruption. Because it will not do... And then we have the gall to demand your impartiality when it stands to work against us. Where exactly do we expect the game industry to go if we let it grade its own damn papers? Okay, so, so first you said uh, impartiality doesn't exist, that you're banking on it not existing, that you require it to not exist, and that you are part of the corruption, and that you're fine with this. And then you said that what, what, what will this lead to? Um... damaged industry? Like the one we have now? Where people like you exist? I'm thinking, maybe, a little bit? Just, just. No? Alright then. Can we really claim to care? When Grand Theft Auto V launched, Carolyn Petit dared to give the game a generous 9 out of 10, docking at a point for being exceptionally misogynistic, more than its presumed cynicism could really justify, a very real problem that threatens the enjoyment of anyone with an eye for spotting marginalization. Well, what that actually means is that she did think it deserved a 10 out of 10, but that it shouldn't get one because it promotes misogyny, which, as anyone who has even seen it would know, it doesn't in the same way that anything by running with scissors doesn't <laughs> doesn't say go around murdering people fucking postal go around murdering people uh, doesn't actually you know say to do that in real life doesn't even vaguely promote it not even a little bit fucking theme hospital it doesn't tell people to go and make a hospital and I don't know, cut people's tongues off for slack tongue syndrome. It, it, it doesn't tell you to deflate people's heads by popping them with a pin. These are things that happen in the game. That doesn't mean it's encouraging you to do them in real life. Also, the misogyny that exists is typically things that you people sort of talk about as, as if, like, okay, prostitutes exist. Fucking misogyny! Well, no, that's not misogynist at all. 
someone punches a woman. Fucking misogyny! What about all the men getting punished? Was that misandry? No, no, that's just the game. Oh, right, okay, f fine, yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that makes sense. Fucking double standards! There is no misogyny inherent in the game. And even if there were, that wouldn't mean it actually promoted it in real life. When she says that she doctored a point for the misogyny, what she's saying is she doctored a point for no good reason, which would indicate that it was actually a 10 out of 10. And as it was a 10 out of 10 and she gave it a 9 out of 10, what she was doing was not accurately depicting the game. She wasn't accurately critiquing the game. Her criticism was invalid. I've not played the game, I can't comment myself. But she believed that the game merited a 10 out of 10 and gave it a 9 out of 10 anyway because of ideology. That was her not being impartial. That was her being partial. <laughs> don't you see that that's wrong? No, of course you don't. You don't see that that's wrong because it agrees with your fucking position. For her commitment to her readership, she was pilloried by the internet's teenage nihilist mosh pit. They deemed her too sensitive to get it, nursing their sense of denied grandeur, with the implication, of course, being that they do. In their mind's eye, they are all very hard, enlightened cultural connoisseurs with sharp wits who enjoy ham-handed, mealy-mouthed cultural shit-kicking, their minds and collective conscience honed to a steely and different edge by the brilliant satire of South Park. Never actually been a big fan of South Park. Um... Did, did watch an episode the other day that made me laugh. Um, it was one in which uh, Magic the Gathering was being played. It was like an und underground like cockfighting sort of thing. They had chickens playing Magic the Gathering, which uh, it, it amused me. I mean, it did seem like the people who had written it didn't know anything about the game itself. Um, but that could just have been that they do actually know and that they were deliberately doing that to irritate people who do play the game. I've known that that, that does happen occasionally in things in TV shows. They, they like, deliberately make obvious mistakes that people who know the game would know were mistakes just to piss them off so it's like ha, 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 we got it wrong um, yeah that's okay but anyway no no what, she was literally in the wrong and so by saying you're in the wrong you even admitted you're in the wrong these are the reasons you're in the wrong that's not in any way wrong <laughs> it's just not people have valid criticisms as someone who's invalidly criticizing. She should just fucking accept it. Instead of saying that, you know, well, you know, what these people, these fucking neckbeard misogynists who live in their basements, no, sorry, their parents' basements, their mom's basements, always their mom's, never their dad's. We assume that these people live with their mothers. Presumably, that's some sort of sexist thing on your behalf, but um, I'm not quite certain where you're going with it. Anyway. <laughs> These people who so vociferously defend a quarter billion dollar technical marvel from a woman looking out for the best interest of others. They are mice that roar, dishonest sacks of hot garbage who should be broken on racks. Mice that roar? Quite obviously a metaphor, an okay one I guess. The sacks of hot garbage, quite mean, a bit pointless really. Deserve to be broken on racks? Well, that's just downright evil. You sound like a total scumbag. I would hate to have anything to do with you. You sound psychotic and villainous. And I am not okay with that. You are suggesting that people who disagree with an invalid criticism should be shattered because they are, in your own words, hot garbage. I think I dislike you greatly. You notice that at no point did I suggest that you should be shattered or that you are in some way garbage. I did call you scum. Not quite as severe, but, um, you know, you are, so I think it's pretty justified. Their, dis their sibilant hissing should not be mistaken for love of games or ideological purity, but for what it is. Insecurity. Are you sure that it's not really just love of games? I'm not in any way insecure, as far as I can tell. Um, I, every day, almost every day recently, haven't been, I've been working, 
put myself on the internet discussing what I feel, what I think. I'm fine with that. I'm okay with the way I look. I'm aware that I'm, I don't know, fat and that I have glasses. Um, I don't have any issues talking about anything. I walk down the street easily enough without thinking I'm going to be murdered. I'm quite arrogant even, so I, I wouldn't have thought I was very insecure. I do, however, love games. As do every other member of Gamergate, as far as I'm, as far as I know, we all love games. That's basically the whole point of it. Our various insecurities, if they exist, uh, don't appear relevant. I I'm saying this because I would have thought it would have been obvious, but apparently not to you. Gamers like games. That's the whole point of it. The identity exists for a reason, and that reason is that, well, it makes sense. We are united by this uh, love of games because many of us love games. It, it's a very simple concept. Games exist, people who like games exist, people who like the games play the games, those are the gamers. Because they like the games, more games are made, they buy the games, they play the games. Now there's a games industry. Collectively, more and more people play the games, which encourages more and more people to play the games. The more people play the games, they play more and more games, and all the rest of it just keeps growing and growing and growing, and eventually there's tons of people who play the games. Because they like games. Those are the games. <laughs> when someone criticizes a game, inaccurately, and those same gamers stand up and say, actually, you're, you, you know, you're wrong, that's not insecurity, that's love games and attempting to protect something that you love. Which I'm pretty sure most people would say is okay. Protecting stuff that you love is, is generally considered sort of a combined right slash responsibility. That uh, not only should you do it, but that if you do, then it's okay. That's fine. And you continue to be wrong. Hegemony in motion. A pleading request for the homogenous neurotypical Mountain Dew, easily ingested but utterly bereft of nutritional value. We seek meaning and guidance from you. They seek to become lost, to set a torch to the path, and they prefer we burn up with them. And our industry would settle to be an eternally burning garbage fire so long as willing consumers stoke the coal. Okay, your metaphor's getting a bit stretched now. The whole cartography map getting lost bullshit um, is bullshit. What's happened is an industry has appeared, a very big industry, one of the largest ever, um, bigger than film, exists. People enjoy it as it is and it's working very well. And you lot have turned up and said, you know what? I don't like that you enjoy this, I don't like the way it's going. I think what should happen is, it should be changed, um, for all of you, uh, to the way that I want it to be. And we've gone, no, fuck off. Just let us have our thing. It's not yours. You, you're welcome to come and join, jo join in. But you don't get to come in and then change it. You don't get to destroy it and put something else in its place. That's not the way it works. You've got a, you're a kid and you've got a, a huge box of Lego. Your, or if you're in America, Legos, um, and you you build something with it. Then you've got tons of other bricks lying around, and you invite another kid to come over and play with the Lego. The kid's allowed to build with the Lego, and if you say, "Would you like to, you know, use some of the I've already got here? I'm going to destroy it. Would you like to help me or whatever?" That's fine. But if that kid comes over and smashes up the thing that you've built and then starts building with it. Then you have a right to be angry and to fight back. You invite someone to come and join with you. They then don't have the right to destroy and dismantle what you've built for yourself and erect in their own image their own vision for what it should have been. What you are attempting to do is dismantle and destroy an industry and erect in your own image 
what you want it to be. This is wrong. Gaming is about gaming. It's about gamers. It's about games. It's not about ideology. It's not about politics. It's not about fucking shoving transgender people into things. It's not about lesbians and shit. It's fucking... It's about games. If a game producer wants to produce a game, let them. If pe gamers want to play that game, let them. When you say people shouldn't be allowed to you know, produce the games that I don't like, people shouldn't be allowed to play the games that I don't like, people should just play all the games I like because I'm the person who knows what's best for everyone. What you're doing is being arrogant and sociopathic. You are ignoring people's at once and desires. You're ignoring their freedoms and rights in favour of your own dictatorial hatred of anything you personally disagree with. And that's wrong. Morally, ethically, whatever the fuck you want, it's just, it's just wrong. And anyone with a brain and any moral compass should be able to figure that out. <laughs> When I engage with media, I know that I am dying. I need to make sure my time is well spent. I don't care if Depression Quest is a game. It could be a fucking sandwich for all I care. None of this matters. I'm engaging, engaging with media and I am dying while I am at it. Okay, so gamers are dead. Gamers don't have to be a target audience. All the stuff designed for gamers irrelevant. Fuck the gamers. The gamers aren't important. No, you don't have to cater to gamers. Now what you're saying is also, games don't have to be games. They can be fucking sandwiches. You're attempting to not only destroy gamers, but also games themselves. <laughs> you want to just... annihilate a multi-billion pound industry. Because of Depression Quest. <laughs> this is not a fucking overreaction. <laughs> it's just fucking... Oh, you... Utter twat. You want to completely remove one of the greatest things ever, the games industry, and mould it into something grotesque and ideologically driven, just so that people will hear what you believe and assimilate it. You're worse than the fucking Borg. At, at, at least they assimilated you and your culture. You want to totally annihilate the culture and then replace it with something else, something hideous and wrong. It's horrifying that people like you even exist. I need to know where I'm going, and chances are I follow you as a critic specifically because you can tell me exactly that. Because your lenses speak to my own. Well, they don't speak to me. I speak to me. I have my own views and opinions. I'm not so easily influenced. When I read anything written by a critic, when I listen to anything spoken by a critic, when I watch anything created by a critic, it, uh, all I do is listen, watch, read, whatever, their criticisms, and then make my own judgment based on the game. Sure, it can give you a decent overview, it can give you some handy, important information, like um, they, uh, I recently watched um, Total Biscuit do a review of, um, I can't remember what it was called, it was a game in which either you played as the humans or the sharks uh, in some sort of underwater battle. Um, which was, it looked very, very good. Um, and he gave a list of um, various functions and uh, game types and things like that. And I was able to determine, based on the technical information, not on his own opinion of the game, but the technical Im information alone, whether or not I wanted to purchase it. If I played the game, I would then know whether or not I enjoyed it, based on my own personal enjoyment. You can't have someone else tell you, you won't enjoy it, because that's not the way it works. It doesn't matter what someone says. 
either you enjoy it or you don't, depending on, depending on your own preferences. We're not all the same. People don't get to tell us whether or not we enjoy something. I know you would like to tell everyone what they will and will not enjoy, and you'd like it to be true. But that doesn't make it so. Nor should it. When GTA 5 stands a good chance of making me, a straight white dude, feel exceptionally uncomfortable about race and gender portrayals, I want to know. Hmm. Well, I also, as a straight white dude, do not. So we appear to be at an impasse. I would like to point out that um, gender portrayals in games is irrelevant and should almost certainly not be a source of uh, criticism. Uh, criticism should be based on the technical aspects and the enjoyment aspects. Now the enjoyment is going to be mostly personal and so can basically be removed from the equation. Uh, objectively speaking, the technical aspects are the important bit. That's why, as far as I'm concerned, there should be two scores to every review. How objectively good a game is, and how much you enjoyed it. That's what I do whenever I review something. Um, so, yeah. Th that seems kind of reasonable. You might just be a bigoted idiot, but that doesn't really help with anything, unfortunately. When God of War is going to surprise me with a sexist trophy that makes me put the game down, I want to know. And when it's something as relatively benign as having to suspend your engrossment to gloss over the fact that Nathan Drake is murdering hundreds of dudes for Mayan trinkets, you know what? I do want to know. I want your insight. I want your agenda. If I didn't, I wouldn't be talking to you. Wow, you seem to be way more affected by games than you should be. You seem to be very, very easily influenced. Maybe you're just very gullible. I mean, you've swallowed all the social justice warrior feminist rhetoric with, with <laughs> um, little to no difficulty, so... This would lead me to believe that you are an imbecile with the mind of a child who's just imprinted on the first piece of ideology that he came across um, and that has influenced him in such a way that he is now incapable of enjoying a game based solely on the game and that you have to read into every game significantly more than ever needed to be written into that saddens me it saddens me that you are now incapable of enjoying a game based solely on its merits and that you have to criticize it for unimportant, uninteresting, irrelevant reasons and that you feel that it is the job of critics everywhere to instead of being critical in any reasonable way to just do what you want. You are dishonest. You are an idiot. You are ideologically driven. You appear to have no sense of morality or even self-awareness. You spew your rhetoric like venomous bile and you infect everything that you touch. There is, as far as I can tell, no saving grace for you. You have no redeemable qualities. You are just evil. That, that's a shame. It really is. So go gonzo. Don't conflate personality with bias. Even if you do, don't see bias as a bad thing. The game industry is decadent and depraved. We need you to be you. Well, decadent, yes. Depraved, no. Decadent, obviously, it's solely for the purposes of enjoyment and entertainment. How much more decadent can you get? That's fine, though. 
that's okay. Stuff solely for the purpose of entertainment is fine. Embrace it. Enjoy it. Learn to live with it. Learn to be okay with having fun. You don't have to suck the life out of everything with your bullshit philosophy. Just play a fucking game. Relax, unwind, have fun with your friends if you have any. Just play the game. That's all that matters. That's all that should matter. Your ideology is irrelevant. Games are about gaming. Play the games. Enjoy the games. Keep doing it. Eventually you'll understand. Unless, of course, you've been so brainwashed that you are incapable of change. I hope that's not the case. That would just be depressing. Don't let the industry buy you off. Don't let the academics take you too far down your own navels. And don't let the commentariat distract you from what we need. The Lewis and Clark journals. The accurate appraisals of these maps. The ways we can make them better. The rest is all sound and fury. Tales told by idiots signifying nothing. You leave Shakespeare out of this, you fucking philistine! If you really believe in this medium as something that speaks to us, tell us what it's saying. To wit, Depression Quest, Gone Home, Dear Esther, whatever. These may not, maybe it's because the format of what we consider to be games don't do justice to what they're trying to say. I'll be damned if we're going to fault their creators for choosing authenticity, and I'll be damned if we're going to silence you for offering us your personal odyssey, but if you want formalism, you know what isn't a game? This. This is not a game. Yes, it is. I mean, it, it's a disc, but it's a, it's a disc with a game on it. That's definitely a game. What's wrong with you? Are you not capable of understanding that that's a fucking game? It's a fucking game! It is a disc. It is fragile, it is tangible, it is not nearly as invincible as Rockstar would like us to believe. <laughs> wow, that was impressive. You're like a freedom fighter. You broke a game disc. What was the fucking purpose? Admittedly, I'm quite amused that you, you will have had to have bought that disc <laughs> in order to destroy it, meaning that you're actually giving money to the people you hate and despise. You are fueling. It's like all these people who buy flags so they can burn them. It's, it's, I've, I've burned the American flag! It, no, you've burned a flag that you yourself have bought. You have paid money to someone else who makes flags so that you can burn it. You've contributed to global warming, you've done something stupid by destroying your own fucking property, and no one else fucking cares. You have paid for something, giving money to people you hate, and then destroyed something that you own. You no longer can use that. Admittedly, based on what you've said previously, if you were to play that game, you'd have a fucking fit and die, so maybe you've saved your own fucking life. You fucking idiot. Now, I assure you, the game is in fact fine. In fact, millions of people are enjoying it right now. But those millions of people, well, they're on their own. Thank you. Those millions of people are on their own. Do you not see how ridiculous that statement is? Millions and millions of people are on their own because, of course, when millions and millions of people gather collectively to do a particular thing together, that uh, they're all clearly on their own. No, you're on your own. You're the one guy who decided, you know what, I'm not going to do that, I'm going to smash this disc. You did that. No one fucking else did that. 
millions and millions of people did the same fucking thing together that was playing the game which is what incidentally games are about you fucking moron the fact that people clapped and cheered it's horrific how can people like you you're so you're just horrible it's it, it's disgraceful your level of idiocy infused with your hypocrisy and your ideology you are a psychotic villainous scumbag and it's horrifying that you have any influence at all over the gaming industry you have admitted to corruption to bribery how do you sleep at night I doubt I could if I were you this is why Gamergate exists this is why there is a consumer revolt against the corruption because when people can stand up and say yes there's corruption I'm a part of it isn't it great and nothing happens that's not a good system so when the people who should by rights have the most influence the consumer stand up and say we're not gonna take this something has to be done so we're gonna do it and then everyone says oh god they're evil they're all misogynists kill them all something like Gamergate happens because it needs to it is a necessity it is a force of nature it was inevitable and now it's happening and we need to keep it going we have already effected change we need to do as much as we can Ladies and gentlemen, fuck off, and good luck. <laughs>